Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Kirksville, located in Adair County, Missouri, on August 6th to the 9th, 1862. Since earlier that summer, Confederate Colonel Joseph C. Porter had been recruiting a militia to resist the Union forces that were occupying the Macon area, Missouri. He had successfully recruited about 2,500 ill-trained and ill-equipped men to his cause, and he had begun a ruckus. This ruckus forced the Union command to take notice of him. When the Union decided to do something, they sent Colonel John McNeil of the 2nd Missouri Cavalry Regiment with 1,000 trained professional soldiers to hunt out these irregulars. McNeil arrived outside the town of Kirksville and found Porter and his men concealed in the homes, stores, and crops in the nearby fields. They had taken up a strong point at the county courthouse as well. When the scouts had found the Confederate troops, they brought up artillery and used the artillery to suppress the Confederates, reducing their numerical advantage. Utilizing a pincer movement, the Union forces approached in two arms, the left side commanded by Major Henry Clay Caldwell of the 3rd Iowa Regiment, and the right side commanded by Lieutenant Colonel William F. Schaefer of the 2nd Missouri. The two forces finally met in the middle of town, driving Porter and his remaining men backwards. The Confederates fought as well as their training equipment could afford, but they were defeated within three hours. The Union secured the town, capturing many prisoners, and within three days had destroyed the rest of Porter's command and capturing Colonel Porter himself. After the battle, 15 Confederate soldiers were court-martialed and executed for having violated their previous parole agreements to not take up arms against the Union. This means they had been previously captured by the Union in other battles, and as part of the release, they agreed not to fight the Union again. This was the punishment for violating that agreement. Additional questionable executions continued to happen, including the execution of Confederate Lieutenant Colonel Fursby McCullough, who was tried as a bushwhacker, but he was actually captured wearing a Confederate uniform with his papers from his command empowering him to recruit. According to the normal rules of war, this would make him a soldier, not a bushwhacker, and subject to being treated as a prisoner of war, not a saboteur. It is said he was given permission to give the command to fire at his own execution, and is quoted as saying, May God forgive you for this cold-blooded murder. Aim at the heart. Fire. Unfortunately, it took two volleys from the soldiers to kill him. Estimated casualties for the Union were 88 killed, wounded, and missing, while the Confederates lost 368 men killed, wounded, and missing. Please join us next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.